Greetings from Riverside United Church. I'm Paul Dillman, and this is the Reflection and Scripture for the second Sunday of Easter, which is uh, April 19th, 2020. As we gather together, we come together as a community of faith and we light our candles, reminding ourselves that even though we're scattered in this time, we symbolically and spiritually come together as a circle of friends, as siblings in Christ, and we light our candle knowing that it is the light and love of God that draws us together. And we celebrate and embrace the truth that that light of God in its mystery and its wonder, in its breadth and in its depth, includes all in the circle. And so we light our rainbow candle, trusting and affirming and proclaiming that God's love is for all. So let us hear our scripture reading. The scripture reading for this week is taken from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Jesus appears to the disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met, were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Jesus and Thomas But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The Purpose of This Book now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The reflection today is called Knowing Peace in Locked Rooms. Let us pray. God of life, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our minds and hearts lead us to deeper understanding of you and the hope you call us to live. Amen. The scripture reading for today is one of my favorites. I'm a big fan of Thomas, and I don't like how he has been labeled as Doubting Thomas, as if doubting is a bad thing. Asking questions and having personal experiences of the holy are vital to a living faith. As I read the passage this year, my mind and soul didn't even get as far as Thomas's entry into the story, because it's in the first few verses where I found myself in the story. The disciples were gathered in a locked room out of fear, and that may be the reality for many in this Easter of 2020. Now, there are different reasons and circumstances for huddling down in fear. For the disciples, there was probably a real fear that they would be recognized and identified as associates of Jesus. 
Peter may have told them about how three people had recognized him just before the crucifixion. In the musical Jesus Christ Superstar, Peter sings earlier in the story, Before it gets too frightening, we ought to call a vote. So could we start again, please? Well, it's gotten very frightening. And so in many ways, we can't be too critical that a couple of days after the crucifixion, they are huddled in fear. They had no idea if the Jewish authorities or the Roman officials would have been looking for them. They are thinking it's probably too late to start again. As we live this Easter season, most of us are not in that active sense of fear that we are in imminent danger. However, I do recognize that calls to domestic, vo domestic violence hotlines are up over the past month. Our huddles of fear are more preventing a disease from taking a stronger hold in our society than it has. We are locked in our rooms and our houses as this pandemic produces anxiety and fear. We worry about loved ones who are in vulnerable situations. We grieve that we are not able to see one another. We live with a latent sense of fear, and we are not even sure who we're afraid of. We can't call a vote. We can't go back a month or two or five and start this reality over again. The circumstances may be different across centuries and realities, but we live and know the power of fear. I wonder how many of the disciples were extroverts who were finding this isolation difficult. I wonder how many of the disciples were finding it hard to express their feelings. And into that room of fear, the risen Christ appears and says, Peace be with you. The disciples recognize his presence are empowered to live into a new reality. It is not that the fear has disappeared, but rather their approach, their attitude, their perspective is transformed. Their souls have been touched and they are able to live with grace and hope. The gift and presence of peace offers a sense of calm, a sense of assurance, a sense of hope. I wonder if Thomas noticed the difference in his friends when he reconnects with them. Maybe he wanted that sense of peace. The story of the risen Christ is in many ways unbelievable. And so he wants and needs to experience it for himself. And he does. The Easter story may be unbelievable. If we think of it as an historical event more than as a truth about how the holy engages in the life of humanity. The gift of new life and assurance of hope is a truth that enables our minds, our hearts, our souls to find meaning and connection amidst various circumstances and realities of our human existence. While it's difficult to find enough words to describe the Easter gift, I think that peace is one of the more helpful ones. A sense of inner peace, a commitment to living peaceably as much as possible. The peace that is offered surpasses our understanding. We cannot prove it, we cannot explain it, we cannot control it, yet we can experience it. We can nurture it. We can trust it. As you have lived these past weeks in a reality of fear and isolation and physical distancing, have you known a sense of peace? Where and how have you known it? How has the holy entered your space, your soul, and said, Peace be with you? Maybe it's been through the gift of music, offering comfort, inspiration, a grander vision of life, as your sighs, too deep for words, find a tune, a rhythm. Maybe it's been through the connection with family and friends. I heard the other day that many are reaching into the past and reconnecting with long-term or long-lost friends, and it's reassuring that it's not just me, as I imagine Zoom gatherings that I can create. Maybe it has been through walking and greeting strangers with an hello, or hearing the birds sing, or seeing signs of resilience and hope in creation or in neighbors' windows, signs that say such as, we will be okay, 
or we are all in this together. Maybe it's been through reading and having our imagination sparked and our anxiety distracted. Maybe it's been through silent reflection, meditation, prayer. Maybe it's been difficult to know a sense of peace amid circumstances that are overwhelming, oppressive, or exhausting. And in those realities, I trust some hope, a touch of peace may break through because sometimes it only takes a glimpse to make a difference. The promise and gift of Easter and its resurrection hope is that the Holy Spirit is relentless. Relentless in breaking open the tombs of despair and the rooms of fear with a peace that surpasses our understanding but does not bypass our experience. It's a peace that assures us that we are not alone, that we are part of God's ongoing story of trust and assurance. Easter does not promise us life lived happily ever after. That's in the fairy tales. Easter promises us meaning and hope as we live with various realities of life. Realities that include fear and grief and tension as well as blessing and joy and possibility. So as we live this week, let's pay attention and experience the sense of peace that enables, to enables us to find our way through the anxiety and stress of this time. And I'd love to hear your images and your experiences. On the night before Jesus died, when he was gathered with the disciples in the upper room, Maybe that's the same room that is the scene for today's resurrection story. The biblical record includes the intriguing detail that they sang a hymn. I wonder if they sang a hymn after the risen Christ appeared in the room with them. Maybe it was a psalm of assurance. Maybe it was a psalm of praise. If we were gathered in worship, we would be singing a hymn at the end of the reflection sermon and I imagine that we might sing the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. For as we receive the gift of God's peace, we are also invited to be channels through which that peace is known. So we sing and we pray, make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your healing power. And where there is doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there is sadness, ever joy. O Spirit, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving to all that we receive, and in dying that we're born to eternal life. Peace be with you. Alleluia and Amen.